today. Here at Octavo Systems, we strive to make designing electronic systems as easy as possible through System and Package or SIP technology. Today, I want to introduce to you the OSD3358SM Breadboard, a tool to help you in developing and prototyping your own products with our OSD335X SIPs. RED stands for Reference, Evaluation, and Design. The RED board is a complete open source reference design and all schematics and design files can be downloaded. The board is designed to allow users to quickly evaluate any member of the OSG335X family of SIP devices, giving you access to all the key peripherals. Finally, develop. The OSG335X, the RED board, provides a preloaded Debian Linux distribution complete with driver libraries for the various sensors on the board, giving you a jumpstart to code development. Today, I'm going to be opening up a brand new RED board and showing you the features that it offers. From there, we're going to boot it up and run a simple program on it just to show you how quick and how easy it is to get it started. So let's jump right into it. So we have our box right here and let's just open it up. In it, you get your red board in a static shielding pouch and you also get a micro USB to USB-A cable. There's also a little getting started card that shows you the features of the red board and also has links that would be helpful to the user. It all comes cushioned and protected nicely by this foam here at the bottom of the box. Okay, so now let's get this red board out of the box and take a closer look at what it has to offer. So right here we have the processor, the star of the show. The red board uses the OSD 3358-512 BSM system and package from Octavo Systems. It integrates TI's AM3358 processor, a TI power management system, 512 megabytes of DDR3 memory and 4 KB of EEPROM in a 21 by 21 millimeter BGA package. So over here we have the expansion headers and these expansion headers serve as expansion interfaces to the processor and therefore expose a wide range of its peripherals. There's also a 16 gigabyte embedded multimedia card or EMMC. It contains a Linux image that the board will boot from by default. The NOR flash is a non-volatile storage space which can be utilized by applications running on the processor when needed and can also be used for secure boot in conjunction with the trusted platform module. Right here we have the serial debug interface. So the UART port of the processor is exposed as a header and this interface serves as a debug port that can be accessed via USB using a USB to serial interface adapter. We also have a JTAG footprint right here, so you can mount a JTAG header on it. This port can be used for software development and debug by connecting a JTAG emulator right here. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the sensors that the board has. So we have our inertial measurement unit here, or the IMU. It has a 3-axis gyroscope, a 3-axis accelerometer, and a 3-axis magnetometer inside of it. Here we have a temperature sensor hub. One channel is used to measure the temperature on board, and one channel that is internal to the temperature sensor gives the temperature of the sensor itself. We also have a pressure sensor. This is a piezo-resistive pressure sensor, and this can deliver high-precision pressure measurements that aid in altitude measurements. Now we have a trusted platform module. The trusted platform module, or TPM, facilitates development of security software. The TPM supports applications such as secure cryptographic key generation, secure boot, authentication, and random number generation. Now let's take a look at the different interfaces that we have. First, we have the PC USB interface. So this port can connect to the USB port of a laptop or a computer. In addition to powering the board, this port can be used to access the board as a storage device or RNDIS Ethernet connection as well. We also have the Gigabit Ethernet interface port, which is capable of 10, 100, 1000 megabit per second speeds and can also be used to allow the processor to connect to the internet. This board has a total of four USB type A ports facilitated by a USB hub controller. So these ports can be used to connect USB storage devices and also other USB gadgets such as Wi-Fi adapters. Over here we have a micro SD card slot. So this card slot interfaces the processor with a micro SD card. 
The micro SD card in the slot can be used as a storage device, a boot source, or can also be used to flash the onboard eMMC to update the software image of the board. We also have an HDMI interface. This micro HDMI port provides an HDMI connection interface to the processor's 16-bit LCD controller. So now that we've seen what the Redboard offers to the developer, I'm going to show you how you can run a program just to see how easy it is to do so. This program is simple and was actually designed by our marketing manager, who had limited experience with embedded systems. The program takes accelerometer, magnetometer, gyroscope, and temp data from the IMU, and altitude, pressure, and temperature data from the barometer. It then displays this data on the screen using charts that update every 50 milliseconds. So I myself, as a college engineering intern, have very limited experience with embedded systems. I've programmed some launch pads before, and I've also followed some hackster tutorials for Pocket Beagle, including one that shows you how to make a magic eight ball. With all that said though, I don't think I'm going to have too much of an issue today getting this program up and running. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I have my breadboard here and it's straight out of the box and I have my micro USB to USB cable and I will be booting up the board right now, which is a really easy process. So basically what I'll do is plug the USB side into my computer and the micro USB side into my board. This is the power light. This LED shows that the board is powered and the four that just lit up show that the board is booting. And I'm going to wait for the board to show up on my computer. OK, so the board is connected and we want to configure our network setting. I want to make sure that I'm running a DHCP server that will give my computer the right IP address. In case it doesn't do so automatically, I will set it manually. I'm using a Mac, so this address should be 192.168.6.1. My board will reserve 192.168.6.2 for itself. The submask should be 255.255.255.0. We're good. Now I should be able to access Cloud9, which is the online IDE which we can use to code on the board. This environment supports several languages, including Python, which this program uses. Cloud9 can be accessed by typing in 192.168.6.2.3000. Yay, okay, so it's loaded. You can see a shell terminal here at the bottom of the screen. And let's make sure that everything is working by hitting enter a few times. Okay, so everything is running smoothly. The next thing that I'm going to do is enable an internet connection on my microprocessor. There are a few ways that you could do this. Check out the following link to find out more on how to do this. So our board is up and running and we're connected to the internet. All we need to do right now is download a package and load the program onto our microprocessor to be finished. And since we're already connected to the internet, all we need to do is to enter a couple of commands to do this. Now the readme for this program says that I need to download a package called pyqt to run this. Let me update the repositories using sudo apt-get update. And when you enter a sudo command, remember to enter the password, which is T-E-M-P-P-W-D. And now that that's finished, I'm going to install pyqt by using sudo apt-get install python3 hyphen pyqt5. See, that was really easy. All that I'm going to do now is to copy the red sensor directory into the Cloud9 folder, which I can do by literally dragging and dropping. OK, we're finished. So everything is basically done, and all I need to do now is to actually run the code. Now the readme for this program says that it needs to be run on the same device that it's displayed on. This means that we need to run the program directly on the terminal of the device. So you're going to notice that I don't have my Mac with me anymore. And this is because 
since we've already loaded the program onto the breadboard, we don't need it anymore in order for it to run as a complete Linux system. All I need in order to boot this board up now is my power supply, a keyboard, my mouse, and my monitor, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first, let us take this micro HDMI to HDMI cable. The HDMI side is already plugged into my display over here. I'm just gonna plug in the micro HDMI side into this port right here on the breadboard. Great. And now I'm gonna use this tiny USB plugin that wirelessly connects to my mouse and my keyboard. And now everything is done. I can control my breadboard using my keyboard, my mouse, and I can see what I'm doing on my monitor. All I need to do is to power it up. And basically, I am going to go ahead and plug this in. You can see the LED over here showing the power and these other four coming up after that, showing that it's booting up. All right, so as you can see here, my breadboard has booted up and I have a complete computing system over here. In order to run the program, I just need to access the terminal and run the program from there. So I'm going to go to this menu right here. I'll go into my system tools and then I'll select the Q terminal option. And this will essentially pull up the terminal. And if I hit enter a few times, right, so this is responsive. So before we run this program, we need to calibrate the sensors on this breadboard first. So there are two sensors that we need to calibrate. We need to calibrate the gyroscope and the magnetometer. I'm going to do this using the commands RC calibrate gyro and RC calibrate mag. The calibration process for the magnetometer is actually pretty fun. You get to spin the magnetometer in the air while it takes readings to calibrate it. Cool. Okay, so the calibration file has been written. All I need to do now is to run the program. All that I'm going to do is make sure that I'm in the right directory by using CD bar lib cloud 9 red sensor display. And now all we need to do is run this program. I'll do this with the command python3 red sensor display dot pi. my program is running. All right, so today I demonstrated to you how quick and how easy it is to get the breadboard up and running, even with limited embedded systems experience. If you want more information or the download link for the program that we ran today, check out the blog that was written by our marketing manager. For the breadboard itself, there is a lot of information and support available on our website, including a quick start guide that walks you through setting the board up right out of the box. We also have a user guide where you can find more information on how to use the various features that the board offers. Eagle Design files are also available. If you have any more questions, feel free to check out our FAQ or contact customer support. With that, thank you for watching this video and happy prototyping.